What's up guys, Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com back with another Unity Getting Started tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to quickly create a level in Unity using Pro Builder. So we'll talk about how to add the objects, we'll create a level, and then if you stick around until the end, I'll show you how to add a controller to the scene so that you can walk around your scene really quickly. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, what we want to do is we want to enable Pro Builder. Pro Builder is a tool that comes with Unity that makes it easier to create levels. So first thing we want to do is we want to go to our window, package manager, and we want to go into the Unity registry. And we're going to look for Pro Builder. And so notice how Pro Builder is showing up right here. And so Pro Builder is showing up on this list. So all we want to do is click on the button for install. If it doesn't show up for whatever reason, you might try turning on enable preview packages in the settings. So just click on the gear, project settings, and then click on the button for enable preview packages. So if you don't see it, you might do that. But we just want to click on the button for install. So we're going to install Pro Builder. That's going to bring the package into Unity so that we can use it in order to add objects to our level. So now Pro Builder has been brought into Unity. And so what we want to do is we want to add a Pro Builder object. And so now what we want to do is we want to go up to in this tools drop down, there should now be an option in here for Pro Builder. And we're going to select the option for Pro Builder window. What that's going to do is that's going to give us access to all of the different things inside of Pro Builder that we can use in order to create things. So for example, this option right here allows us to create shapes. So if we click on this, notice how it added a shape. And notice how there's two ways you can look at this. You can either look at this in icon mode right here, or you can look at it in text mode. Usually I use the text mode, but you can really go either way. I just find that I don't necessarily know what the pictures mean. Um, so just go with whatever you're most comfortable with. But let's go ahead and let's start by creating our level floor. So I'm gonna delete this and we'll just start from the very beginning. So what we wanna do is under new shape, we wanna click on the plus button right here. That's gonna give us an option to create an object. So we can create a cube, um, stairs, cylinders, doors, other things like that. We want to start by creating a cube and we'll go ahead and we'll set the size to maybe like 50, 50 and 0.25. So we're going to use this as our floor object in here. And we're going to click on the button for build. And so basically what that does is that adds this as a unity object inside of your scene. So notice how I can move it around like this, if I decide that I want to. You could also edit it by adjusting the settings over here. So you could set this to zero, zero, zero. You can adjust the scale. This is basically an object in the scene. Notice how when this gets brought in, it comes in with a collider, meaning that if we had things with physics applied to them, then they would actually run into this object. And so now we've got our simple level created, and it's even probably a little bit big but we're gonna go ahead and leave it as is for right now. And so now let's say that we wanted to add some walls. Well, we could just add another cube shape, but this time we'll set our length to maybe like 10. We're gonna set our height to something like 10, or we're gonna set our thickness to maybe like 0.25. So something like this. So we're gonna use this in order to create a wall inside of our scene. And you could adjust this. Maybe you wanted this to only be five, but then we can click on the button for build right here. So now this object has been created. And let's say we wanted to edit this object a little bit. Well, not only can we use the tools in the Pro Builder tool set, which I'm actually gonna dock down here like this, but you can also use these buttons right here in order to select things inside of Unity. Well then, you can adjust them just by dragging on them like this. So notice how when I drag on this, I, I can actually adjust the size of the object that's in here. And so let's say that we wanted to make a more complex wall with this. So I'm gonna take the whole thing, I'm gonna move it to the edge of my scene like this. So we're gonna drag this over here to the edge of our scene. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna select this face and I wanna use it to adjust my wall until it goes to the edge of my object right here, right? So now we've got a wall that goes all the way around the outside of our scene. There's other ways that we could have done this too, but this allows us to just manually place these walls like this. Well, one of the things we can do is we can also hold the shift key in order to create a new 
face. So if I was to hold the shift key and drag this, notice what that's doing is instead of moving the face like we were before, it's actually creating a new face. Well, what that means is that means that now I can, you don't want to click and drag this yet. You want to hold the shift key and drag this. And what that's done is that's creating a new face right here like this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that in order to create a border wall all the way around the outside of our level. All right, so now we have a level in here that's completely enclosed. So if we were to drop a controller in here, notice how all of these objects have mesh colliders applied to them. So your controller would run into those objects. But now let's say that we wanted to add things like stairs or ramps. Well, all we would have to do is just click on the plus button under new shape. That'll pop up that same window. But in this case, instead of having a cube, we want to select the option for stair. And so when I add the option for stair, notice what that's going to do is that's going to add a stair object into my scene. But in this case, what we want is we want a stair that has no curvature. So we'll just click and drag on this um, so that it doesn't have any curve in it anymore. Notice how you can adjust the number of steps in this stair, as well as things like the height and the depth using these sliders. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate this like this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this stair so that it's got some more depth to it. So we're going to make it a little taller like this. We'll give it some more width. So something like this. I know it's a really wide stair, but that's okay for what we're trying to do right here. Then we're going to click on the button for build. So now we've got a stair in here. And so I'm just going to add a couple more elements to this scene. And then we'll talk about how we might be able to add a second floor. All right, so now let's talk just for a second about how we might add a second floor. So, um, cause we've got a stair that comes up right here, right? Well, what you're gonna want is you're gonna want a, um, a second floor up here that you can run onto. So probably what we would do is we would just use the cube shape again, um, cause that's gonna be the simplest shape. And we can go ahead and we can give it whatever thickness we want. So I'm gonna start with a 10, a 0.5, and a 10 and then click on build, but then we can just edit it using these edit tools in here. So I'm going to close out the shape tool and then we're just going to move this up and down. Notice that you can tap the control key in order to get this to snap to the grid in your scene. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this so that it intersects with my wall with my wall right here. We'll jump over into face selection mode. We'll just move this over here. And then we'll just move this back like this. So now we've got a second floor over here as well. And I might adjust this wall so that it's a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to do a shift click in order to select multiple different faces like this. And then I'll just drag it down just a bit so that we're aligned a little bit better. But then you might come in here and you might add some short walls on here or you might not. And so let's say we wanted to apply a concrete material to my ground. So I've downloaded a concrete worn floor material from Polyhaven and we just want to bring this in and we just want to apply it. And so the way that we're going to do that is first off we need to bring the texture files in to our scene. And so in this case all I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click in my assets folder. I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it materials like this. And so what you want to do is you want to download the material maps that come from Polyhaven, you just want to select them and you just want to drag them into this folder. And so you can either just drop them into the materials folder or you could create an individual material folder for each one of the materials for the maps. I'm just going to drag them in here for right now. So we're just going to drag these maps in and then we just need to create a material with them. So right click and I will link to a video where we do that in more detail, but we're just going to right click and go to create material and we're just going to call this concrete. So we've got this material right here and then we're going to drag. In this case, we're going to drag the diffuse map into the albedo folder and we're going to drag the normal map into the normal map folder, making sure that we click on the button for fix now to mark that as a normal map. But now if we go into the pro builder material editor right here on this first option, what we can do is we can and so what we want to do is we want to add another material to our material palette. 
So in this case, we want to click on the drop down right here, and we want to go find that concrete material that we just created. So we're just going to click on this, and what that's going to do is that's going to add that to your list of materials that you can apply. And so now if you select this, and you either click on this Alt plus two, or if you actually type in Alt one, Alt two, it's gonna allow you to apply that texture to the surface. And obviously we need to take this uh, material and change the size of it. So we're gonna adjust the tiling to something like 0.25 and 0.25, or maybe even lower than that, maybe like 0.1 and 0.1. So that's a little bit big, but we'll go ahead and use it for right now. So basically what we've done is we've created a concrete material that we've applied using the material editor. And so you can add multiple different materials to this list, which I'm gonna do real quick and then we'll jump back. Notice how I can actually drag this out of my materials folder directly into the slot right here. So for this wall, for example, we could apply the brick material. And again, I'm gonna adjust the tiling like this. But notice how I'm able to add this in here. And there's still some things that would need to be cleaned up with this, but this isn't a material tutorial. So we're just gonna kind of leave it as is for right now. But so we've got these materials in here. Let's say that we wanted to add the concrete material to just the steps. And then we wanted the brick on the edge here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the concrete material in here just by clicking on it with this object selected. But then I wanna come in here to my face selection mode like this. And notice how when I select these faces, I can apply the brick material to these individual faces like this. So we're in face selection mode here, which is gonna allow us to select these individual faces. And we're just gonna apply a brick material to that. So now, we've got concrete on the top and brick on the side. And granted the transition isn't very good right there. So depending on how much you were concerned about realism, you might extrude these faces out a little bit. So remember, we can just hold the shift key in order to create an extrusion, but then that at least would give us like a little bit of separation here on the edge so that you don't have that weird transition in here. But you can see how adding things like brick walls and other materials in here would be really easy using this tool. All right, so now let's add a controller to this scene. And so the way we want to do that is we want to go to the Unity Asset Store. I will link to this in the notes down below. And we'll go ahead and we'll use the third person character controller. So you can find this in the Unity Asset Store and bring this in. And so what we want to do, you want to make sure that you click on the button to get or whatever this button says before it says open in Unity. But then you want to jump back into Unity and you want to go up to the window package manager. And under your assets, you want to find Starter Assets Third Person Character Controller. And I'm gonna click on the button for Import. So I'm gonna click on Import right here, and it's gonna let me bring in all of these different uh, files. So we're gonna click on Import, and it's gonna bring all of this in. And so if you enable this and you get this warning about the new input system package, you wanna make sure that you click on the button for Yes um, in order to enable the back ends, otherwise these controllers aren't gonna work. So we're gonna click on yes, and it's gonna restart Unity. All right, so then what that's gonna do is that's gonna import a starter assets folder, including a third person controller folder. Well, you can just go into the prefabs section and there's a nested parent armature pack that you can bring in that has a little person on it. You just drag that into your scene right here. So when you drag that into your scene, make sure that you adjust it so that it's up above the ground. So I'm finding the easiest way to do that is just to use the position function right here. You can use the arrows, but they're going to be way up here because there's a controller piece that's brought in. But what that does is that brings in um, a package that contains the controller, the camera, everything else. One thing you do want to do is make sure you delete out your other camera that's in the scene so that the one that's inside of this object is the only one that's in here. So then if we click on the play button, what that's going to do is that's going to let us play our scene and that controller is going to come in and you're actually going to be able to walk around your scene using the controller. So um, notice on the steps, they're a little bit big, which is something that's worth kind of taking a look at, um, but you can use the space key in order to jump around. 
So you can actually move this controller around in your scene. And so there's other controllers that we could bring in as well. Um, we're not gonna focus too much on that right now, but there's a lot of great controllers in like the Unity starter packages that have like guns and other things like that that are kind of interesting too. But we've got our first level created where we can actually walk around our scene and actually see what we've created. All right, so I'm thinking about doing a series on actually creating things like this for actual architectural walkthroughs, but I'd love to hear from you guys what you think in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.